Just to record the conversation while we're talking. There we go. That's now recording in the background. So everything we say from this point forward is recorded for trading purposes and possible entertainment product manufacturing. Seven AM waking up in the morning, bounce ball wants to do a show. Bollocks, follows, follows, where did this come from? Nothing for six months and now we're back on on and on and on and on and on and gotta get down to my MacBook. Gotta write a filth, I grab my pen. Eight is in my left brain, memes in my right brain. Gotta make my mind up, which song can I fake? It's Friday, Friday, sign up, take those birthday. Gotta keep him happy cause he's our last listener, listener. Friday, Friday, curl up with a bottle and cry day. And I was looking forward to a quiet weekend, weekend. Podcasting, 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 podcasting. Shit, 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 shit. I'm going to ring his fat neck. 10.45, shaking off a hangover. Holding my guts, I want to die. Christ, my bum, I want some tums. I've got the shits. Shaking too much to hold the mouse. Gotta start a dacity. Popping up rubber bands, I want to die. Bouncy's has got his own shit. News bodies up on bricks. Dr. Hamhock is too talented to answer his phone. It's Friday, Friday, Synaptic Flow's birthday. It's okay, it's not like I was playing Spelunky, Lunky. Friday, Friday, doing this shit on time day. Obviously, my free time is worthless, worthless. Podcasting, podcasting, hey! podcasting, podcasting. Hey! Cunts, 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 I'm going to start my own YouTube channel. Last week we did no shows. No shows. Next week we'll do no shows. No shows. This week we're making shite. We're making shite. We're gonna talk some balls today. Tomorrow is Saturday and killer is dead comes out. Save me please, Suda51! So we're the Lollacost. We've been a bit quiet. But we're back today for one night only for Synaptic Flare's birthday. It's lunchtime and it's sober, that can't be. Fuck this shit, I'm going to the seaside. Do you want to have sex in Clacton with me? I'll book us a deck chair in a B&B. It's Friday, Friday, Synaptic Flare's birthday. Might have met him at Eurogamer, but I was wankered, wankered. Friday, Friday, it's probably already high day. And we'll get this next week out of iTunes, iTunes. Podcasting, podcasting, hey! podcasting, podcasting, hey! Bones, nuns, Chelsea Bunts, I'm running out of rhymes. Podcasting, podcasting, hey! podcasting, podcasting, hey! till the hun, round trees, fruit come suck you all, I'm going back to bed. Are we sitting comfortably? Then let me begin. We are the roller course. Welcome to We Are The Lollacost. Cut engine waffle to 30%. Cutting waffle. Isolate the Mingmongs. Mingmongs isolated and pilloried. Ridicule the PlayStation. PlayStation ridiculed. Places, everyone. Here he comes. Captain on the bridge. We 
you're the Lola cast. In this one, I'm a space captain. I'm doing this one myself. I finally got bored. Nobody helped me sing. We tried that already. Hammock and Bouncy combined their voice. It only made a scene. Nobody helped me sing. Oh. oh, oh. Nobody help me sing. Oh, oh, oh. Help me be captain of a crippled season three. So I didn't script this one. It's time for references. It will probably be a disaster. I cannot give a fuck. I've just necked half a bottle of Spar and Volcart. Captain's Log. Ha <laughs> ha! Log. Stardate 11111111.11 one. Good morning, Captain. One! Right, here's one for the captain's table. I'm on this planet, right, and the whole place is going mad around me. Got about, all ten Klingons up me ass, by the way, with their big boomerang things. And they all start fighting over which one of them gets to get the honour of taking me down. So I shout, OI! Klingons! No! I was in Shakespeare and David Lynch's Dune and stuff. I don't have to put up with this. I'm working with Seth MacFarlane now. What cartoon are you working on, Delancey? Eh? Answer me. I said, what fucking cartoon? Hello, Captain Sachs. Do you need your stomach pumped again? Oh, ha, bloody ha. As a matter of fact, no. I have, in fact, finished the last of the Space Thunderbird. Captain? That is logistically improbable. This vessel is stuck for a five-year mission. Nope. All gone. And so's the Space Schnapps, the Space Mad Dog 2020, the Space Frosty Jacks, the Space Ace, the Space QC, the Carlsberg Spatial Brew, the Space Cooking Wine, the Space WKD, the Space Jager Bombs, and the Sainsbury's Spacex Red Wine. And you know what that means, crew? It's time for an away mission. <sighs> Captain, we have completely lost gyroscopic equilibrium. We're locked out of the controls. It's like something's steering us straight into that sun. Hull integrity lost on 6, 12 to 13. This will be complete ship annihilation in 30 seconds. Where are the lads? We might actually die for once. Bonsoir, mes amis. Je m'appelle Pierre Didier Bolzac, and I am the imaginary Frenchman who lives inside the Holocaust's heads. He's got a dodgy accent. He smokes a hipster pipe and lives in our foreheads. He reads our minds while we're asleep. The Holocaust dream critty. Bonsoir, mes amis. This is Peter the Holocaust Train Critic, and this week I shall be reviewing the dream of Monsieur Newsbot, which I have entitled Overbot. The dream it starts, so you say, in medias res. The scene is Dr. Amok's laboratory, and it is an industrious scene set before our eyes, mes amis, as Dr. Amok works day and night. Dr. Amrock, says the newsbot, why have you put a rotating fan up my bottom? It is not Tuesday, is it? But Dr. Amrock, he does not listen. He is too industrious in the grand design of affixing a large length of canvas around the newsbot's waistline. Finally, the magnum opus it is complete and Dr. Amrock clips a switch. The fan in the newsbot's derriere, it activates the fabric pillows. And voila! The newsbot is now part newsbot, part overcraft, and he glides majestically into the air. And the pair of them offer us across the English Channel, with Dr. Amok riding the newsbot's back, and off they go to Gay Paris. Ah. 
hell tragic the dream of Monsieur Newsbot. He keenly feels the neglect of Dr. Amok. And in his mind, when the fabric pillows are around his waist like this skirt, he is the little girl or the saucy madam he desperately wants to be. And Dr. Amok will once again give him the polish and possibly whisk him away to the honeymoon in Paris. And perchance, mes amis, maybe they will do a little science under the stars. If you would like your dream analyzed and reviewed by the Lollocaust Dream Critic, please get in touch with us via Twitter. Although, if your father has the face of Tregard from the Nightmare, then you are on your own with that one. You strange, strange little minky. Captain Sex, for inappropriate behavior, for disturbing the space-time continuum, for bringing the space lords into disrepute, for crossing the streams, for the destruction of Deep Space Nine, Babylon's 1 through 4, Space Station Badger, and Moon Base Ziga, Zig Alpha, and for all round drunken debauchery, you are hereby sentenced to be stripped of your command and your title of Space Lord. To have your vessel, the SS Batman Time, impounded, and to be exiled to Earth in the 1960s to work with the army. Betrayed by the very council he swore to protect, Captain James Captain Space Dalek Sex took his ship, his crew, and his courage, and made the bravest decision of his space career, and did a runner. We're locked out of the controls. It's like something staring us straight into that sun. Hold the check key also on next 12 to 13. Estimate complete ship annihilation in 30 seconds. We're done for. There's no way Auric will be able to run a diagnostic and determine the source of the rogue signal in time. Of course, it could be that something is leaving the controls. Again. Oh. Right, moving on everyone, I need a complete diagnostic of the ship. Already done, sir. Engines are at 23%. Auxiliary power is stable and holding sufficient waveform to maintain shields while the hull self-repairs. We should be at full capacity within two hours. That's all very good, but don't you have a more important job to be doing? Sir? Damn it, I'm talking about the vagina having. Do you have any idea how dangerous it would be if I were to attempt having a vagina? Your role on this crew is to have a vagina. So just you make sure to leave the sciencey bits to us boys. And, you know, stand there having a vagina, Ensign. What the fuck? I'm not an Ensign. I'm a commander. I outrank all of you. Ensign, we've been through this before. We are on a deep cover mission at the behest of the Space Lord Council themselves. It is vitally important that we maintain cover at all times. Yes, I keep meaning to ask you. How's that mission going? The Council will contact us when they are ready. They have contacted us. At last count, you had 7,823 unread emails from them, all marked urgent. To be opened when we reach our secret destination, of which only I know the location. Fine, fine. I'll just stand over here and have a vagina. Would you like me to have any breasts while I'm at it? Enzyme, that's terribly sexist. This is the 22nd century, you know. Men are allowed to have breasts. I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. If I push it any harder, the whole thing will blow. Thank you, Mr. Blobby. Now, that diagnostic. I need some kind of computer. Online, Captain. You know, some kind of artificial intelligence that can give me up-to-date information. <clears throat> Ready when you are, Captain. 
Sort of like a robot. A robot programmed for news. Captain, diagnostics computed and ready. News robot. News robot. New... No, no. No, nobody got any ideas. <sighs> no, Captain. Damage report. Ensign Miller, how's the situation on those decks? Awful. It's just awful. It is really, really, really bad. It's not as bad as Keith Lemon the film, because it is so bad. Nobody is on form. Everybody is atrocious. Excellent. Nothing of us then. Right, beam me down to that planet. Ensign Miller, make it more sower. This came along and it was like somebody had just dropped a pear drop in my mouth and then massaged me for an hour. I'm the devil, and dividing the internet up into a series of ordered lists was my idea. Hello listeners, this week I'm going to be talking about cocks. One cock in particular and a specific bit of it. I'm talking of course about the holy foreskin of Christ. This is a real thing by the way. I haven't made any of this up and I've been around since the dawn of time so I happen to know wherever I speak where I present my top five men who've boasted about getting their hands on Christ's todge. At number five, it's the Emperor Charlemagne, a good friend, a hit with the ladies and an ancestor of Christopher Lee, who gave it to Pope Leo III as a coronation present in the year 800. I've seen some fairly evil presents given in my time. Most of them I invented myself, such as Imac, plastic dragon dildos, a gift set of laughing cow cheese, the Mrs. Brown box set, Gift cards for money off a Netflix account, alcohol-free whiskey, and socks. The fact that a man gave another man a man's cock, though, and not only did I have nothing to do with it, but it was presented as a holy act, is the kind of thing that gives me grudging respect for the other team. At number four is Hans Winkle, who stole the foreskin during the sack of Rome in 1527. I don't actually remember his real name. We all just ended up calling him Mr. Winkle. I mean, if you've got the balls to storm Rome and steal God's tickly wiggler, a nickname like that is going to stick. He hid in his cell when he was imprisoned, and it stayed there until 1557, and on its removal the village was plagued by a wave of miracles in protest. Here's to you, Hans, you magnificent bastard. Not only did you steal the holy fireman, you actually turned it prison gay. Kudos. At number three, jointly, it's the priest of Le Puyon Valais, Santiago de Compostela, Antwerp, Chartres, Biscon, Newport, Metz, Hedelsham, Carew, Conque, Longre, for Camp, Stoke-on-Trent, and Calcutta, and two in Auvergne who all claimed that the sacred salami was in their possession during the Middle Ages. Although how anyone would notice one more cock in Stoke is anyone's guess. Two though! Auvergne claimed to have two! Having shared a sauna and a cold beer after work with God, I don't want to get started on the problems with that. Well done all of you, you're cock crazy! Number two on this list has to do with King Baldwin of Jerusalem, but it's not the man himself, it's whoever sold him the holy foreskin when he was on holiday in the Middle East. Now we've all come off the worst in a deal with a greasy local during a drunken jaunt across the world. Some of us go to London and end up paying for London Bridge. Some of us have gap years and come back from backpacking holidays in Germany, having parted with 50 euros in return for a brick which a credible kraut swears is from the Berlin Wall. Look, it's got a blood stain on it and everything. Believe it or not, somebody actually sold the sacred wang to the king during the First Crusade in Palestine. I thought I'd been gotten good when I was high on Robert Hessin during a party in Adelaide in 1997 and someone sold me what they convinced me was Natalie Ambruglia's used chufty plug. This man, however he was, raised the bar for all of us, and for that, evil thanks him. 
Finally, at number one, the dim Italian workman who claimed to have found the luckless flap while restoring an abbey in Rome, sadly forgetting that the holy happy flapper was not actually missing, sparking a long-standing clash with its established owners, the Church of Calcutta, which wasn't known as the Winky Wars, but really, really should have been. This lasted until the 20th century when the church introduced a blanket ban on all further dong scussion under pain of excommunication. The Second Vatican Council removed Christ's Circumcision Day from the calendar of Holy Days, but some ultra-Orthodox Catholics still do the penis party on January the 1st. Well, that's it from me. I'm off to wait in your wardrobe so I can turn your duvet at 90 degrees to your body after you fall asleep. Look, I'll be honest, I played a lot of games recently, um, but I could do with some new ones. Any recommendations? Sex talks about apps. Uh huh. I can't be bothered to edit that in. You'll just have to use your imaginations. Um, there's a Scandinavian game that I've had my eye on called Rim de Capsule, which isn't a sexual act. Um, I presume it's not a sexual act. You know me. I'm pretty sure that if I if it were a sexual act, I would have I would have heard about it and probably tried it. But it's spelt R Y M D K A P S E L, and it's a real time strategy stroke simulation game in which you have to build a space station and defend it against marauding aliens in the style of FTL but the shapes of the rooms that you get to lay down are Tetris shapes which come randomly Ah. which is very compulsive indeed Guilty Pleasure this month is Where's the Stig from the BBC which is the Top Gear version of Where's Wally Is he always at the dump? (laughs) I don't know (laughs) Is he always down bargain booze? (laughs) <laughs> trying to get them to put copies of his autobiography on on the counter. Sex talks about apps. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, if you like your puzzle, um, very quickie, casual games, then I can heartily recommend. And I've lost my window, so I'll have to rem- I'll have to just remember where they are. Uh, Linkies, which is a shit keeps falling colour matching puzzle game, but one in which the physics are realistic. So instead of just being a flat grid, you've got round gems and hexagonal gems and square gems, and when you've cleared some, they all fall against each other in a realistic way. Right. Does that make sense? It does. Unfortunately, I saw a episode of Dragon's Den, or I saw an advert for Dragon's Den, where they actually had a little board game without a board called Linky, and now that's all I can think of. So um, well, I'll have to, I'll have to play that to get that out of the way, you know. Yeah. Uh, Tiny Pop. Tiny Pop is the best clone of Puzzle Bobble I have played. It is maniacally fast. It is just Twitch, Hotline Miami speed fast. Uh, the, the music is very good. The sound effects are very great. If you put your headphones in and have a shot of it, then you'll, it will make your brain go fucked. Welcome back. Well, before the break, we had a piece of technology, and now we have another piece of technology. So you can hear him whistling already, so he's ruined it. Then a computer is Rolf Harris. Rolf, welcome to the programme. Greetings, greetings. Now, are we are used to you using all your artistic talents um, with all sorts of things, but now you're helping to launch a worldwide competition to produce art on computers, right? Yeah, isn't it exciting? Yeah, yeah well, how do you do it? How do you do this? Yeah. Well, that's a picture that... that we created earlier on uh, with all little bits. Let's just wipe that. You put that little thing up there to the C. Yeah. And you press that, and then it says, clear, are you sure, question mark, question mark. Yeah. So you belt across there, and you either say yes or no, and I say yes, and we'll wipe that out. Press the fire button on this thing here, and you fire it, and the thing's wiped out. So now... Oh, so now you've lost that picture. That picture's lost gone. Lost it for good? You could have put it on an S and saved it. Rolf Harris has been charged with 13 child sex offences. Beauty three-year-old has been charged with nine counts of indecent assault related to two girls aged 14 and 15 in the 80s and four offences of making indecent images. Right, here we are. 
Chundering across the galaxy, Sex searches for his lager to lead his White Lightning League to victory over the changing forms of sobriety. Eh? Yeah? You see what I did there? Little wheeled warriors pastiche? Bit of vintage John Michael Straczynski there? You know, before they were famous, eh? You know... Just a minute, where the fuck is everyone? Batman time! Batman time! This is Captain James Captain Space Dalek Sex to the SS Batman time. Come in, Batman time! Hello, Captain. The transport is fucking broken. It's only sent me down. Oric, where are you? I'm a computer, Captain. I can't come with you. But what about that machine I single-handedly invented to put you in an android body so you could defuse a dimensional vortex bomb and save the three-breasted women of Total Recon 6? Captain! God damn it, did I dream that? Okay, fair enough. What about Ensign Yoni and Ensign Miller? We're flying the ship, Captain. What? We're flying the ship. Ensign Miller looks after the navigation computer and the Netflix account. And I do pretty much everything else. In fact, you're the only person on the ship who doesn't seem to do anything. But, but, what about the crew? There are thousands of them. I talk to them all the time. Is this the crew... That only you can see when you've been drinking? When am I not drinking? <sighs> we'll talk about this when you get back, Captain. Quiet, all of you. I appear to have found the facility's holding bay. Judging from the side of the blast doors and the obvious security, whatever this race that has that's precious must be in here. And that means it's liquid lunchtime. Huzzah! Liquid lunchtime is my favorite meal of the day. Right after the nightcap and breakfast ales. Newsbot, run a bypass. I am not Newsbot. Run a bypass anyway. Wow. Captain, are you okay? My God, it's full of tarts. Okay, crew, we are now in a priority one situation. We have rumbled a big-time space sex slave operation. This building is full of women with glassy stares and slack inviting mouths. They've obviously been drugged because their skin has an unhealthy waxy sheen to it. Auric, 2,000 to beam up. What? I said 2,000, you 8-bit cunt! <laughs> Fine! Captain, what the holy fuck have you done? They're everywhere. God, they're everywhere! I can't move! It's wall-to-wall -wall waxy whores in here! Don't talk about them like that. These are prisoners of the sex trade with feelings and rights. One of their taints is in my eye! Wait, it says Made in China on it. Must be some kind of identification marking. A tattoo in clever gang code. It says Real Doll. No, that's Real Doll. With an H after the first D. It's the name of their race, I've just made it up. Ugh. I think I've artificial beauty, my seconds. Alright, everyone just remain calm and try to keep your head above Minge. Captain, I can't reach to fly the ship. Don't worry about it. We have all the time in the world to free ourselves. It's not like anyone has weapons locked onto us. Captain, a vessel has locked weapons upon us. Alright. On screen, Ensign Yoni. Oi! Attention, fleet pirate ship. This is Rod Blakey of the Starship Clitterator. Now they do lecherous layabouts, you are stealing from the People's Republic of Dildron 4. Now you return them stolen adult goods, or I'll have your ass, butler. <laughs> oh, this is make my day, this is. Now you get them busts out. Captain, have we just stolen 2,000 sex dolls? Possibly. By mistake, in the course of a humanitarian mission on behalf of the Council gone hideously awry. Tell them we'll give it all back, would you, somebody? How? Captain, a city class warship is decloaking. That's the hand of Bouncelon. Oh, shit. That's Lord Bouncelon's flagship. We're saved. All we have to do is contact them, and they'll tell us that you're really a space lord on a covert mission and they'll sort it all out. Yeah, um, we can't do that because, um, it'll blow our cover. What? Why? <clears throat> Attention crew, it is time for me to reveal to you the full scope of our mission. We have been ordered to pretend to be rogue space lords on the run from the council and under no circumstances can we break cover. 
Obviously, they're bluffing to make the illusion really convincing to our enemies. Captain Sex, this is Space Lord Bouncelon with an H after the second L. Power down your weapons, surrender your vessel, and turn yourself over, or you and your crew will be summarily executed. There will be no second warning. They don't sound like they're bluffing. All right, so. Captain, I've got one hand free. I've got an idea. Can you maneuver us so that the pursuing police vehicle is between us and the warship? I think so. Make it more so. -er. I hate you, Captain Sex. I hate you so much! <laughs> And so we escaped from the Space Lord warship. The 2,000 rolled dolls were saved, and everything worked out fine in the end due to my bravery, heroism, and sheer sexual magnetism in the face of certain disaster. It's all in a day's work for Captain James Captain Space Dalek Sex. Who are you talking to? I was talking to you. Oh my god. Look, could you please in rebel keep it down? Because I can't leave myself bleeding to take care. Oh good, you managed to save him then. Look on the bright side, Captain. At least you'll have someone to accompany you on away missions now. Oh, good, yes, great. Look forward to that. Now, if you'll excuse me, everyone, Captain Sex has mouths to feed. Two thousand of them. With Spump. I'm bored in here. The booze is all terrible. It's now to drink. The smell of ice. Let me try by chugging the beer Bum 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 After bum 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 I want to lie prone on a stretch of bed Final resting on my gooch Ten and sex to strong absorbing through my comb Bum 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 After bum 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 after bum 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 I am the Holocaust was written by, produced by, and starred Dalek Sex. Resident 4 was the voice of Ensign Yoni, and Iala Dupe Shea was the voice of Rog Blakey and Oric One. Lollacore's music was by Dr. Hamhock, a.k.a. Andy Simcock, in loving memory of Nathan Smith.